Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and a Card. It's um, Friday morning. Happy Friday to anybody who's watching. Um, if you're watching live, TGIF. If you're a worker, then it really means something, right? Hello. Good to see people coming on. We'll give people just a few minutes to get started. Um, just a reminder to leave a comment in um, down below and say hello, say good morning, say where you're from, maybe, and um, then you will be entered into a raffle for a prize. So nice to see you. Okay, some of my regular people there. Hello, Teresa, Debbie, and Marsha, and all others that are joining on. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We have a sunny day today, which is nice here in Maryland. Hope you are having a good morning as well. And um, I know it might be early for some of the more West Coast people, but um, this kind of works um, for this um, event right now. So I'm glad you came on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, from Wisconsin. All right, a little earlier there. Okay. Um, okay so my purpose for today for this um, little Facebook Live is to have just a short little um a short little tutorial on a card, and it was prompted by this card that one of my downlines, Allison, had sent to me as a little thank you, and um, I just posted it to remind people to send happy mail. Okay, it's nice to send cards, but even as card makers, we like to receive cards too. So um, and it, it's it's nice. I love it. So I said, oh. Okay, just a reminder, send some happy mail, and I do love this DSP, the Sun Prints, and it's an interesting fold as well. So, so many people are saying, oh, I'd like to learn how to do that. Um, so, that's what we're doing today. Oh, I know, it's beautiful. I just love this DSP. Um, so, if this, um, maybe we'll do this more often, just a, a quick one little card, and then we can... Um, now, sip our coffee along the way. Make sure you put your coffee on the back away from your project, don't want to have any spills, um, or have a covered cup. All right, I'm going to move mine in a second. This is what I got when I retired from teaching. Retired, either that or I'm tired again. Retired, I don't know. But <laughs> um, I'm doing a lot with Stamp It Up, so I don't know if I'm retired or not. <laughs> so who knows? Oh, it's cold in Arizona? Really? Oh, my gosh. It's supposed to be warmer there. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, not too cold here right now. I think um, where I, I lived before in New York, they were supposed to get snow the other day, but I think they ended up not getting snow. But this is actually the longest, I put in my email, the longest we've gone into the, into the season here in Maryland that we have not had snow ever since recording time, since they've been recording the weather. That's what my son-in-law said to me the other day. So... That's um, kind of interesting. No, so we had a couple little flurries. If you looked closely, we had a couple flurries the other day, but other than that, nothing. 36 degrees in Arizona. Oh my gosh. That is chilly. But it's a dry cold, right? They always say dry heat in Arizona, but I don't know. Either way, cold is cold, hot is hot. It does make a difference though with low humidity, I have to admit. When we were out in Arizona, we were surprised it didn't feel quite as hot as the temperature said it was because we were used to the Hudson Valley in New York and um, it got kind of humid there was near the river and in a little valley. So yeah, the humidity just kind of settled in, but whatever. You make the most of where you are, right? Okay, so I'm just moving some things aside here so I can have some more room to to do our project today. So like I said, this card uses the DSP called Sun Prints. Okay, that's probably backwards for you, but when I turn the camera around, it won't be. Um, okay, hi Patty, South Carolina's cold too. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're supposed to be getting a little colder snap as well. Okay, so Sun Prints is part of a suite on page 90 of the annual catalog. And it, um, Sun Prince is the name of the sweet collection. Now, stamp it up if you don't know yet. Um, has coordinates a lot of products so that you don't have to hunt through and see what works. You know, they make a lot of things that coordinate right off the bat, so you don't have to 
even think about it. So you have the paper, you have the um, the stamp set, you have the die cuts, a lot of things just work all together and you can order things as a whole collection or you can order them individually and usually the stamps and the die cuts or a punch if there's a coordinating punch sometimes they're bundled together so you can save 10 percent on those so um i'm actually going to flip my phone around so that you can see my desktop here and i've got stuff all over so please it's not the most tidy but Hopefully you won't see most of the mess. But this way I can show you the things a little bit easier. Okay. So I'm just going to flip this around. Give me a second. I don't have my fancy um, software yet that I can do this on the computer. So hold on one second. Okay, so here we go. Now it's going to be a little harder for me to see some of your comments because I'm working underneath my phone right now. But I promise if I miss any of your comments, I will read them later. And um, like I said, leave a comment, say hello, where are you from? And you get entered into my raffle for a prize. I have some fun things in my stash that I can send out to you. Some stamp sets, some DSP, some embellishments. So um, say hello. I love to hear your feedback and I love to know where you're from. <clears throat> and um, nice to know who's watching. Okay. So I am going to make the exact same card that Allison made. That way you can see exactly how that's done. And then I have some other products that... I'll use to make a similar card. Okay, same exact design, just with different products, just so you can see you know, how how that all works. All right, so if you are stamping along, I'll try not to go too fast, but you can always watch the replay and go back. And then, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna make another card just with different paper and colors, so um, you can catch up then. All right, so this starts with one full sheet of cardstock. So this is what you need for your materials. One full sheet for the card base. Okay, that's what's going to give us the, the flaps. All right, that's eight and a half by 11. And then you need, for your inside, you need the white, which is five and a quarter by four inches. So that's typical for the inside of your card. And then for your DSP colors, um, DSP, you need either one or two same size as your inside, five and a quarter by four inches. So Allison used actually two different patterns, okay, this and this. If you like the back side of your DSP, you don't need to. You can just use one because we're going to cut it in half diagonally. Um, if you prefer a different pattern, which I think she made a great choice, these two go together beautifully. This one on the back is just rather plain, so I can see why she chose something else. So those are lovely together. Okay, so um, that's all you need for the cardstock, but you do need a scrap for whatever label you're going to put on the front. All right, um, for the inside, you can put a sentiment, and um, if you want, you can stamp something on the side here. I'm going to show you a couple different options for that as well. All right, so like I said, we're just going to be kind of quick and um, you know, enjoy your coffee, sit back and relax or craft along. Cheers, here's my coffee. <laughs> I'm taking a sip. Okay, so I made a little diagram for how we have to cut and score this. Let me move this up just a little bit. First, we're going to score. We're going to score in half vertically and horizontally. Now, I suggest doing this very lightly because we are going to go back and cut on one of these lines. So sometimes if you score deeply and you go to cut it, then you have that little bit of a lip where that indent was from the score. So I'm going to suggest just doing it very lightly or I will show you how you can kind of get around that and not have the score line. 
Okay, you know me, I try to give you extra little hints and tips and tricks. <laughs> All right, so let me get my scorer and trimmer out. And then we'll get started. So with your full sheet of cardstock here. Um, oh, uh, thank you, Ardeen. Thanks for following me and watching the tutorials. Um, I've had a little, I've had some technical difficulties with my computer. I needed a new computer um, just before Christmas. So I finally got one and I needed my hard drive checked out. So my external drive. So finally, that's where all my files were. Luckily, I had to back up and everything's fine now. So I just have to install that on my new computer. All right. So enough of my woes. <laughs> Hopefully get my videos up again. So that's the story there. All right. Okay. So like I said, we can. We can score very lightly, um, and we are going to cut down halfway. So what you can do, um, score one way, then the other. Oops, at five and a half. So four and a quarter and five and a half this way, just very lightly for now. Actually, this one you can do a full score. The vertical one is where we're going to be cutting. So what we will do is I'm going to move my scoring blade up out of the way and I'm going to use my cutting blade and I'm going to go down to that score line there. So I'm going to go down to, like I said, the score line, which is five and a half. There's a little mark on the side of the the blade here that is kind of like a pointer to the ruler on the side of your guard. So um, that's an easy way to see that you're in the right spot. Then I'm going to use my score and just make sure I have a, a nicer score down below. All right, so that's what we have here. We have that split in half right there. So now I'm. we need to cut, if you see my diagram, these are the pieces that are going to make up the card, and these are the pieces that we're going to remove. So we are going to actually cut two diagonals, one this way and one this way. So it takes a little um, thinking out, okay, like most carpenters say, think it out, measure twice or three times before you actually make the cuts, and make sure you're going in the right direction. So here's the cut I already did here, all right, that top one there. I'm going to fold the score lines because when I go to cut this way, my card stock could get in the way. This one, not so much, but when I go the other way, it, it might. So um, when I try to go this way to make this cut, you can see the card stock is kind of in the way of closing up here and it's not going to close properly. So. I'm going to first cut this one, this side here, and my scoring tool just fell off. That's okay, move that over there. So I'm going to cut this from the top corner down to where that, that score line is. All right, so if I fold it a little bit, I could see it even better. So, and I'm seeing, looks like I need a new, a new blade. It's a little rough there. Okay, so just lining this up in, with the channel, that corner, I can even move this one out of the way by folding it down. Let me make sure I'm on the camera here. There we go. Okay, so from this corner down to that, um, where that score line is, that's what we're going to cut off. And I'm double checking. Yes, this is the direction I want to go. Because it can be a little confusing. Okay, one's this way, one's that way. Just think it out, take your time. Now here's my suggestion that I tell people all the time when you're doing a diagonal cut, don't start on the point because as your blade comes down, you don't want to compromise that point. You want a nice sharp point there. So I would start from this end where you have more of a straight edge or better yet, I even start in the middle, press down my blade, go one way and then the other to finish it off. All right, so now you can save these for another project. Lots that you can do with those pieces. Okay, so now let's compare. This is what we have. All right, so we scored, and we cut this down, and we cut that part off. 
and this is the flap that we're saving. Okay, so we're going to save this. This is going to be our inside of the card, and now we have to cut in the opposite direction from the center over to the end here. Okay, so now this is where cutting that piece off first comes in handy because it's not getting in the way. You see that? So now I'm going from, um, I have to fold this down so I can see where I'm going though, right? So going from the center there to the point here. Uh, and again, I'm going to start my cutting in the middle so I don't bump those, um, um, those corners and, and kind of mush them up together. So this is the, the shape that we end up having now. Then we can burnish those score lines. I would do one at a time and open it up and do the other because if this is down, um, you're not going to get as tight of a fold mm -hmm. as you would like. All right. All right, now one other thing I like to tell people as a little hint, when you're cutting your cardstock, it's just physics that as your blade is going in, it's pushing the paper down. So sometimes if you flip it over, sometimes you see you have a little bit of a lip on the underside of your card. Now, this... Um, you, know, you can kind of think it out and make sure you cut upside down if you want, but that takes, you know, a little thought. And sometimes your the backs of your cards are showing as well as the front of your card. So what I like to tell people is go back and where you feel that little lip that's sticking up a little bit, take the side of your fingernail and just kind of pull it down to flatten it out a little bit. You could try your bone folder as well, I and mean, that works too. Okay, um, sometimes I just use my fingernail because it, I can feel it. I can feel, okay, now it's nice and flat. So think about that, because if you don't do that, your card can look a little amateurish or sloppy, so you want it to look as nice as possible, right? All right, so that was pretty easy once you know how to do it. And I will post this diagram so that you can see that even better. Okay. So you have a guide there. You have the measurements in the description below the Facebook post. So um, I will try to put it below this one as well, just so you can follow that along. All right. So now let's take the DSP and we're going to cut these diagonally. Now, again, just um, if you were to cut just one piece. I'm going to show you with this one, just one second. If you were to cut that diagonally, now this has no top or bottom to it, so it doesn't, um, doesn't really matter which direction I go, but, um, let me just show you. I'm cutting this diagonally from the top right to the bottom left because this is the piece that's going to go on the top. So we're going to cut from here to here, all right, just diagonally. And this piece um, is that quarter inch smaller than your card base. So when you cut it, it's going to fit nicely on that little diagonal cut. So here we go, diagonally. Again, start in the middle, especially with the DSP because it's lighter than the card stock. All right, so if you have just one piece that you're using both sides for. That can go there. You flip the other one over and that could fit on the next part. So it's all good. All right. Now, here's a little trick. If you're using two, you have to make sure your second one is going to be cut upside down. All right. And I'll show you. So let's cut the first one. Okay, this, um, I'm using Night of Navy and Gray Granite. It works for Sahara Sand also. That's what Allison used. I'm using the Gray Granite, so you can see the slight difference. Okay, so here's my piece here. Now, remember, if I were using this, I would flip it over, right? So that means... I can't cut this one in the same direction. I have to 
either flip it over and cut it or just cut it in the opposite direction so that I have this shape here, right? So I'm going to cut it in the opposite direction so I have the flat piece on the bottom and the point on the top. Hope that makes sense. I want to show you both ways. Obviously, it's a lot easier if you, let me start in the middle here, if you have one piece that has a pattern you like on both sides, you know, this could work, those two if you wanted. But see, now we have a piece that matches this one, and that's the one we're going to use. If you wanted to, you can make one folding in the opposite direction using these, right? Or flip them over. Well, those two wouldn't go very well together. That would be kind of boring, wouldn't it? But if it so happened that it could work, just I'm sure you'll find another use for these. I'm sure. We don't throw away any of our scraps, right? <laughs> All right, so let's bring back the um, gray granite. Okay, uh, just to show you the difference, this is the Sahara, Sahara sand. See how it's very subtle difference? This one is a little bit more brown. This one's a little bit more gray. All right, but they're both very soft and they, they can certainly work. Um, like I said, Allison did hers in the, um, I know the lighting is, is weird the way it's catching here, but she did hers in the Sahara sand. Okay, that looks really nice, right? Okay, so now we just glue our stuff on. We're going to glue that on to there. I'm a fan of the liquid glue. Because, especially for these kind of projects, I can get right down into the corner. Last thing you want is your corner sticking up again. That can look kind of sloppy. Um, I like to use very thin beads of glue. I move my glue kind of quickly across so I get thin beads. So when I push it down, it's not going to um, smudge and push out of my project too much. I love my silicone mat because if there are any seepage seepages of the glue it's going to come out on my silicone mat and not on my paper where it's going to stay sticky so if any glue gets on here once it dries it just rubs right off i know do you guys remember <laughs> as a kid playing with elmer's glue putting it on your fingers and then it rose off <laughs> Okay. Oh, hi, Ellen. I'm glad you caught me live also. That's great. Thank you for joining in. I always feel like romper room when people do this. Hello. Hello, Denise. Hello, Debbie. <laughs> I used to watch romper room when I was a kid. Tells you my age. And I always waited for her to say my name. Never did. Never did. Although Lorraine is more of a 60s name anyway, but never heard my name. That's okay. It's all fun. Okay, so see how you have that one-eighth border all the way around? And you have your card. Nice and easy. So now the inside. Again, five and a quarter by four inches. And you can leave it plain if you like. It is going to have um, a label or something on here. But it is nice to decorate it as well. Okay, so see what Allison did? She took two different stamps from the coordinating stamp set. And that is Nature's Prints. And that's what we're going to do. Because I want to show you exactly how to do this card. Move this out of the way. We're going to use coordinating ink, Night of Navy, and Gray Granite. And um, I'm going to do this. This in blue. It looks like ginkgo to me, right? Which wouldn't be blue, but that's okay because it's just so pretty. Okay, now this block is a little small for this stamp. I have a different one behind me, but I'm only going to be using the top part of it anyway, so I'm not going to worry about not getting that down there. All right, so I'm going to just take a little of this. Um, I like to practice on my scrap paper first to see how dark this is going to come out. So, um, if you want it, um, see this is kind of a, a shaded look, so it's not not too bad. If you if it was too dark, you can always stamp 
off on some scrap paper and then stamp again for a lighter image. So this was a very juicy ink pad, so I did have a lot of ink on there. So um, I might just choose to stamp off. This one is a little bit lighter than this. So let me try that again. I'm going to clean off this part. Copy there. Okay, so I'll find it in view here. Okay, so I'm going to stamp off first. Oh, I've got a little smudge there. Flip it over, right? And then I'm going to stamp here. I'm going to angle it a little bit so it doesn't go too far into my card, leaving me room to write. Okay, stamp off again. And I'll go in the other direction here, just so it looks a little different. I close this up. I always try to close up my ink pads right away because you know accidents can happen. Your cards flop into there and then it's a mess. And you have to make adjustments. You have to hide your smudges and whatnot. Okay, same thing with my stamps. I try to get them right back in there so they're not running rampant. I, felt, I lost a stamp the other day. It was... I guess not from this one, but it was about this size. I had it out. I was planning how I'm going to set up my card. And all of a sudden, it went missing. I said, it was here like three minutes ago. I did walk out of the room to talk to my husband about something. But then I came back, could not find the stamp. I'm looking in my bin, under the table. I'm looking in the garbage. Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. Couldn't find it. Finally, I said, okay. Calm down, Lorraine. It will turn up. It's here someplace. So I went a little to my left. I had a, I have a stool next to me where I had put some DSP on. I picked up the DSP to see if the stamp was under there. Not that I put it there. And sure enough, it was there, but it was stuck underneath. I picked it up and I felt, oh, there's the stamp. It got stuck on there because I was throwing things around. So lesson learned. <laughs> Be careful with that. Okay, so here's my... Um, my uh, gray granite ink, just checking, make sure I have the right color. I'm going to test it on my scrap paper, see how dark it comes. Do a second generation stamping, and it's a little bit lighter. You can see the difference there. Okay, so I will do the little bit, a little bit lighter one. And like I said, go in different directions, so it doesn't look too much the same. Look how pretty that is. Really nice. That could even be the front of a card, too, right? I um, could put a strip of DSP down the side here and you know, maybe take take a piece of what you had here before. Just cut it and put a strip and then put some sentiments. Oh, creative juices are flowing. All right, close it up. And put that inside. You can stamp a sentiment or just leave room to write. Whatever you like to do. And remember, you can decorate your envelopes too. This would look really pretty on the outside of the envelope. Okay. Yeah, we've all been there losing things, right? <laughs> okay, so look how nice. So then all you need is your... Um, to do a sentiment there. So let's take, um, she did a heartfelt thank you. So I'm going to do your on my mind, just to be a little different. And there are some people that I need to send cards to, just to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Haven't heard from you in a while. And I'm gonna show you what it might look like. I'm gonna change up just a little bit. I'm going to use the navy for the sentiment. Okay, she used the Sahara Sand. Either way, I'd like to show you options. So I'm going to stamp this here. Okay, ta-da. Close the ink, clean the stamp. Okay, who loves the chamois? Can you tell mine's well loved? I actually cut mine in pieces. So I cut mine about two thirds on the top. Oh, ignore my phone. And then some small pieces here. So if I'm using my Stamparatus 
and a big stamp it's hard to get that on my cleaner so sometimes I'll just take my smaller piece and go over it or if there's a little nook and cranny in there that didn't get clean I have my little piece but I've had these I've had this particular chamois from the beginning it's my original one terribly stained but you rinse it under water squeeze it out um, until it runs clear and it's all good to go I keep it in a, a empty stamp case and it's fine okay so let me throw that back in here don't want to lose that and I'll clean this one as well thanks for your patience and those of you who try this card um, add it to the comments down below um, once I post this up on on Facebook that way we can see people's versions maybe use a different stamp set different DSP different colors okay I love to see the varieties I love to see what other people do don't be shy okay we're all friends here it's okay <laughs> all right so we have our sentiment and decorative circle is this punch here so we'll use the same one Okay, just putting that right there. And now, here's something you have to remember. You cannot put adhesive around the whole thing, right? And you can see why. Otherwise, the person will never open your card. They'll say, oh, that's nice. Then they, you, they won't see your message because it'll be glued down. <laughs> so only adhesive or dimensional dots on the edge here. All right, so if you wanted to... Be a little more precise okay and remember you can't be down here either just on here so one thing you can do is hold it in place take a pencil and just draw a little a little line okay no you can't go past that you can go back and erase it no one's going to see the back anyway but i'm going to make sure that my dimensionals stay on the side i'm going to use dimensionals Okay, so use a regular size. I think three will be good. Don't skimp because this is just holding on halfway anyway. Okay, I might put a small one in there. I love having options of the big ones and the minis. Used to cut up all the others, which is fine, but it's nice to have the minis. So you can do just that and not gum up your scissors. And quicker and easier too. Okay, so off we go. And now I'll make sure I'm in line there. I could feel those, um, I'm going to erase the line first, just in case it shows on the inside. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. Oh, hi, Deborah. I'm trying to read some comments now and then. Um, so, like I said, if you've joined on um, recently, before, you know, since the beginning, leave a comment, say hello. You'll be entered into a raffle. And, um, yeah, and you know, feel free to share this. I'm going to also post it on YouTube. And one of these days, I'm going to try YouTube Live because that can reach more people as well that are not on Facebook. So, okay, so there we go. And then you can put on some um, some embellishments there as you like. So you will know what that looks like. Um, one thing about the way this paper was cut, obviously I'm covering up some of the design here and it's a little blank up here. Um, you might want to choose your DSP so that you have more design showing up there. But either way, I think it still looks kind of nice, right? All right? So here's very quickly, I'll run through this process quick, quick with one other card. And I'm going to use the um, gray granite. And I'm going to use the, um, the desert um, set uh, collection from the new mini catalog. It's so pretty. All right, so here we go. I'm going to score it this way first. Five and a half. You'll see how quick and easy this is. I'm just going to whiz through this one this time. And I'm going to score this on the bottom. 
Like I said, you don't have to score it all the way at the top unless you really feel like you want the visual. I'm going to lift my lift my guard. I move this my score out of the way, and with the cutting tool, I'm going to cut down to that score line right there. I can see with the mark on the side, and I can also see with my five and a half measure. Okay, so there we go. Now I need to cut um, this top part again from, remember here's our, here's our guide, from middle there, from the split, over to the edge. So I'm going to move this one down out of the way, and I'm going to cut this. Okay, this is just a quick review. Start in the middle, up and down. This one's going the opposite way. I'm going to fold this one down out of the way, and then go from here. Start my cut in the middle, go one direction, then the other. Okay, and you have your card. I'm going to press down where that edge is from the blade. And that's not a default of the blade or the trimmer. It's just any blade is going to cut down into the paper and push the fibers down, right? It's just the way it is. Score your folds. And this is the this is the paper that I used before. Okay, I'm going, this is the delicate desert paper. Look at those beautiful colors. Looks like some sun, um, some landscape, some sunset, um, soft succulent, pale papaya, um, clips of coral, pinks, and oh, just so pretty. So check that out in the mini catalog. Right, so we're going to glue that there. We're going to flip it over and then glue that there. See how nice and quick and easy it is? Let me know how you make out with yours. And there's my silicone mat. Okay, with the liquid glue, there's room to move it and adjust it before it completely sets. So the other adhesives are wonderful and nice and strong too. Okay, this one, I feel a little edge there, so I'm just going to press that down. Okay, not only can you feel it, but sometimes you can see it if there's a lighter color on the other side. So down that goes. Okay, make sure very light glue. I like to take the tip and just smudge it into the corner so it's not going to ooze out. And, okay, um, what stamp sets are you guys either using or planning to use with this card? Write some in the, in the comments. Let me know. Okay, I like to keep a little envelope of, I'd say, white one quarter of a sheet. It's really less than one quarter because um, we trim off half an inch on either side, so it fits. But that's just my quick my quick thing. So um, to put that inside there, I'm going to stamp something on the side, but also I'm going to use um, from the Desert Detail stamp set that coordinates with this paper. Um, you can always put your card, fold your card this way too. You don't have to have top first. You can decide which way you like it better. Um, I'm going to use this stamp set. I stamped this I can't tell if it's a flower or a succulent. It kind of looks like a succulent because it has those little tips on the leaves, but then the center threw me off. So I don't know. Either way, it's pretty. <laughs> I stamped it, and then I die cut it. This has coordinating dies. This are just beautiful. It has some frames. It has some decorative borders. It has this little um, leafy plant. It has this. Even if you didn't want the whole bundle, I know I have a friend who just ordered this because she likes the frames and the plant and the borders and this. So even though she does, she's not going to use these as flowers, um, for the flowers, there are all these other elements here too. So that's an option if you're looking for that. So I was thinking, and I'll put this all together later, um, I die cut this out and I thought that could look really pretty right in the middle. Okay. Um, I could also, if I wanted to attach it to a big circle, 
and then put another sentiment on there too. So um, I could always offset it. I could put this here, offset that, have a little sentiment down there, and I think that could look really pretty too. So I'll finish this up and post it um, in the comments down below so you can come back and see that. Um, and then I'll also finish up this card. Now I want to show you this because playing around, you come across things sort of by accident, and you say, oh, well, that's a nice idea. I was playing around with this paper that's retired. It was Splendid Day, and this was the paper I wanted to use first. See that beautiful foil? Gorgeous. And But I didn't like the other side of it, so I used a separate piece, which is this pearly paper, and it has this white kind of embossing on it. And this is something I never noticed. I saw the leaves on here plenty of times, but I never noticed the, the little ladybug up there. Okay, they're scattered throughout the leaves. I only noticed that last night. I had this paper for months. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use those two, put that aside, and it will lay out like this. You don't need to see me glue it together. I'll show it what it's done. And then I said, okay, I want something here. Now, I didn't have the set that coordinated with this. So I looked through my stash, and I came up with um, framed florets that has similar looking flowers and, and leaves, right? So I figured that could work. So sometimes, you know, you can mix and match your your collections of, of stamps and, and papers. Um, so then I was thinking, okay, I didn't want anything too busy here because I didn't want it to detract from this beautiful paper. And this down here is rather subtle, yet has a lot of intricacies to it. So I'm thinking, okay, what could I do? Then it came upon me to, what if I, because this reminded me of white embossing, what if I white embossed the edge of this? Now, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can see it there. Hey, lighting is a little tricky here. Um, so right here, um, I did white on white embossing for just a very subtle look, and it kind of mimicked the look on each of these papers, you know, the white lines on there. So I am going to attach that on the inside for that more subtle look. And I'll hold it together. You can kind of see. Okay. So that would be really pretty there. And then I took my Label Me Lovely uh, punch, which is one of my favorites, another large punch, and I will put that there with my sentiment on it. And it's just enough detail over here to be interesting, not too plain, but yet not detract from the rest and, and still keeps a very elegant look to it. Now, I was playing around with different ways to color it. I took um, a my dark sea foam stamp and blend because this is sea foam soft sea foam cardstock and i said well what if i colored that in i didn't know if i'd like it so started on a strip of scrap paper and blossed it and i tried some different things up here i tried with the um brush side i just added some color within those leaves just like this and you can see i'm going over it so so that's getting a little bit darker and then I took the tip and I brushed along the stems I wasn't sure if I liked that so the next thing I did I did the same thing just took my brush which is kind of neat because the embossing holds in the ink it's not going to smear up here it kind of spread a little bit because the alcohol that's the idea of the alcohol inks for them to spread and blend more easily so even if you do um, they will go through a little bit on the back too, so be careful of that. So even if you do just a little, a little mark on something, okay, it will bleed a little bit and spread. But that's the beauty of it. That's what you want out of your alcohol markers. So next, on this one, I took the fine tip, and I just went across. Um, I just traced to one side of those stems to get a little bit more detail. So it wasn't as thick as this. That was a little too fat. I didn't like that. This I liked a lot better. Um, but so, no, wasn't quite sure. This one I just did the leaves. And when I first did the leaves, I said, oh, that looks a little weird that they're hanging out there and we couldn't see the stem. So my favorite would be either this or this. Um, the leaves are kind of fun. And then when you look closely, oh, yeah, the stems are there. So... It gives a, a pretty look, so um, that could look 
Let me dip that in here. That could look nice in here too, right? All right. Um, but then if that's too much color for you, then just keep it white on white. So I, just, I like to give you options. You know me. Um, you could do this or that or whatever. So um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do you like it with the leaves colored in or do you like it with um, just the white on white? Right? Either way. It really can. So I will put the sentiment on here. Um, maybe um, a birthday would be good. Wishes. There you go. Wishes for a beautiful birthday. That fits very nicely on there. And I would do that in the soft sea foam. So come on back later and I will add those cards in the comments. And I hope you can do some of your own and I enjoy you joining in and saying hello today so let me just flip the camera around and I can maybe see your um your comments a little bit better hold on one second get my oh okay hello there we are my fancy uh system here sorry about that Okay, there we go. Now I can see more of your your um, your comments and who's on again. So I, I hope you try it. I, did anybody craft along today and, and actually do one today? Yeah, let me know. I know there's a little delay. Um, okay, Patty likes the white on white. Yeah, it is really pretty. I could see that as a wedding card, right? Or or um, engagement card, something like that would be pretty. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, just um, wanted to mention if you're not already on my mailing list, I know a lot of you are, and that's how you got here. Um, if you're not already on my mailing list, go to stampwithlorraine.com and you can sign up there and get a free tutorial when you first sign up. Okay, and um, then you can also um, continue, um, consider there is a great deal with celebrations right now for joining. And oh my gosh, this is, I think this is the best deal ever that they've ever done. Um, $175 worth of product for $99. Who wouldn't love that, right? Um, uh, we have, I have a great team of stampers. You know, Patty's one of them. She's on today. And uh, we have fun making projects. And um, I help and guide my, my team members to whatever extent they want. You don't have to have a business. Okay, you can just sign up for the discount you get 20 percent discount and 99 dollars gets 175 dollars worth of product it's, it's terrific or if you want the mini cut and emboss machine hold on one second here's the mini comes in traditional white but just for celebration for a limited time you can also get it in what will be a new end color boho blue so if you wanted that, just tack on $30 and you will get, um, for $129, you'll get the mini machine plus the plates that go along with it and $175 worth of product. And that includes the free shipping. So just something to think about. Um, if you have a wish list, who doesn't, right? If you have a wish list of $99 or more, consider signing up for, um, to be part of my team. You, there's no... Um, no long-term commitment. You can stop whenever you want. Um, there is a minimum of $300 for um, sales, which can be your own sales or a customer, doesn't matter, um, for a quarter. So after your um, discount, 20% discount, that goes down to 240. So it really is, you know, for a lot of people, that's Quite manageable so just something to think about and if you'd stop there's no penalty you keep all your products and you're all good to go so um so let me know what you end up making i'd love to see your i don't know what the official name of this is diagonal flap card i don't know but um <laughs> show me your ideas show me down below and maybe we'll do this again sometime all right it's fun thank you all for the support and stay tuned okay have a great day everybody bye bye now